So good afternoon everyone and welcome to the International Summer Short Term Course on Organic and Sustainable Agriculture. So for my, for my topic today is all about pest management and organic farming system. So I'm your lecturer, Jonathan L. Galindez from the Central Zone State University, Science City of the Philippines. So for the outline of my presentation, first, I will give you the basic principles of pest management and organic farming system, then the various control measures in organic farming system, and the last one is the effective pest and disease management in organic and sustainable agriculture. So for the introduction, crop protection in organic agriculture is not a simple matter. It depends on the thorough knowledge of the crops grown and their possible pest pathogens and weeds. Successful organic crop protection strategies also rely on understanding of the effect of the local climate, topography, soils, and all aspects of the production systems are likely to have on crop performance and the possible host pest complexes. However, major pest disease damage is sometimes seen in organic crops, which are very susceptible to damage. Since healthy plants living in good soil with balanced nutrition are better able, able to resist pest disease attacks. So managing pests and diseases, so managing the ecosystem of an organic farm is a very challenging. It is more even more complex when factoring in insect pests and diseases. Since the use of synthetic pesticides are prohibited under organic system, the organic cropping system should be focused on the prevention of pest outbreaks rather than cropping with them after they occur. And there is no single method that is likely to be adequate for all the pests. So it is a combination of all control methods in organic farming system. Successful pest management depends on the incorporation of number of control strategies, as I mentioned earlier. And some strategies will target insect and disease separately, and others will target them together. Pests in a crop do not automatically result in the damage or yield loss. Once in station level reaches a certain point, then they can produce economic losses. Any strategy in organic farming should include the following methods. One is insect and disease avoidance managing the growth environment, and direct treatment. Organic ecosystem planning for effective insect and disease management must involve the entire farm operation. So you should know the history of the area and use all information available. So one techniques or one techniques in organic farming system for pest management is the avoidance. So to manage pests and diseases effectively, producers or farmers need to understand the biology and growth habit of both pests and crops. The type and concentration of pests are open responses to previous crops history. Pest life cycle, soil conditions, and local weather pattern. <clears throat> so under these techniques, avoidance, one is crop rotation. So crop rotation is central to all sustainable farming system. It is an extremely effective way to minimize most pest problem while maintaining and enhancing soil structure and fertility. So to reduce soil borne pests and diseases, rotate host with non host crops and rotation can also break insect pest life cycle and help reduce weeds. Another technique for avoidance is field sanitation or crop residue management. Many key pests have many host plants, and if those plant hosts are weeds or old harvested but uncultivated crop, they can contribute to supporting the pest population on the crop. So, Reduce or removing crop residues 
and alternative host sites can be used to control some insects and many diseases. Incorporating the residue into the soil hasten the destruction of diseases pathogen or disease pathogen by beneficial fungi and bacteria. So burying disease plants material in this manner also reduce the movement of spores by wind. Controlling weeds, particularly flowering weeds, is crucial for the successful management. Another one is the seed quality. So the use of high quality seeds is especially important in preventing diseases. So make it sure that when you plant, you have a good quality seeds and there is no, so that there will be no source of pathogen. And the supplies should be free from any diseases. So planting physically sound seed is an important in crops. A crack in the seed coat may serve as entry point for the soil borne microorganism that may cause rotting of the seeds once it is planted. So another one is record keeping. So record keeping is very important. Keeping field records can provide a very useful information. So a complete history of each field should be included in your record book. Any insect or disease infestation which managed method work and which did not. So you should include the activity that you have implemented or being done to control this pest and list of management techniques try in the future. So number two is the managing the growth environment. One is the healthy soil. Maintaining favorable soil condition is the first line of defense against insect pests. The addition of composted livestock manure improves soil quality, including increasing the population of soil microorganisms that compete with soil-borne plants pathogen. A biologically active soil with good drainage support vigorous crop growth, allowing a higher level of crop competition with weeds. Field experience has also shown that plants fertilize by the slow release of nutrients from compost or organic fertilizer are more resistant to insects and diseases than crop fertilized by synthetic or highly soluble nutrients. Soil testing become important in applying compost regularly so that you know the recommended rate of the organic fertilizer that you're going to apply. So another technique is the crop and variety selection. So the choose of crop is a very important. Choose a crop that is suitable for the location. A strong, vigorous plant is less susceptible to the attack. And some cultivars are resistant to or uh, repel or are less palatable to pests than other cultivars. Plants also vary in their degree of attractiveness to insect diseases and vectors of transmitting diseases. So factors such as leaf and stem toothness the nutrient content may affect the uh, population of insect pests. Intercropping. So the practice of intercropping, wherein two crops are grown at the same time, can reduce pest problem by making it more difficult for the pest to find a host crop. This, uh, these techniques also provides habitat for beneficial microorganism. Another one, another technique, the seeding date. Planting should be scheduled so that most susceptible time of the plant growth does not correspond to the peak of pest cycles. Early seeding reduces crop damage caused by different insect pests and diseases. 
Delayed seeding can be effective in avoiding presence of insect pests infestation in the production area. So seeding rate. So seeding rate, more plants in the field may reduce the impact of a given insect pest population on individual plants, but they may create a more favorable habitat for insects that prefer a dense canopy. So a dense canopy can also create a moist soil surface and elevated humidity within the crop, conditions favorable to a certain leaf diseases or uh, fungal diseases. Reducing the seeding rate may decrease the severity of take-all, but uh, reduced canopy may also allow weeds to invade in other crops. So reduced seeding may also produce more insect damage, as in the case of aphids, flea beetles, and leaf hoppers, which attracts a contrast between a green host and a dark soil background. Trap crop. So, in some instances, other crops might be prepared habitat for a particular pest, and in if some of the prepared crop is grown, it might draw the pest away from the main crop. So, in some cases, a particular crop stage is prepared by the pest, so a small sacrificial plant can be used as a trap crop. So, trap crop means planting of similar variety or other varieties of crop in the, uh, near the main crop to attract insect pests during the uh, certain stage of the crop. So, rogging. So, rogging refers to the labor-intensive practice of walking in the field to remove disease or insect-infested plants. So, it is very important for you to visit regularly your crop production area in order for you to monitor the presence of pests and determine the degree of infestation. So, rogging may be practical for a large field, but could be suitable for seed plants or crops having highly infectious and destructive diseases. So it is very important to practice or implement rogging because uh, rogging means removing the infected plant parts, for example, the diseases. So you can remove or detach plant parts that are infected by diseases to avoid contamination or transmission from other healthy plants. So the last uh, techniques to reduce pest infestation in organic or sustainable farming system is direct treatments. So again, as I mentioned earlier, monitoring. So monitoring is very important. Insect monitoring or traps are useful in determining which insect pests are present in the field and whether they are at economically important level. So putting a light trap in your crop production area could, can be uh, uh, very efficient to determine what type of insects are present in the production area. It is a vital that growers have has a positive identification of the insect or disease causing damage before choosing a method of treatment. And another <coughs> technique to reduce pest or insect pest population in the production area is the utilization of biological control. So biological control means using beneficial microorganisms or habitat manipulation and or products derived from natural organism to control insect pests. So under organic farming system, this beneficial microorganism and natural, uh, natural control are present because these microorganisms are free to live compared uh, in the conventional farming system that you are applying chemicals so their population will not thrive under that 
system because they are very susceptible to to chemicals. So under organic system, you are not using any synthetic uh, or poisonous chemicals. They are free to live in that uh, system. That's why they are there. They are the one helping us to manage the population of this uh, harmful insect. So what are those beneficial insects? So the parasites, the predators, and other entomopathogenic microorganisms also present in the uh, production area. And one technique to invite this beneficial microorganism in the production system is you can plant flowering uh, plants in your production area so that uh, these beneficial microorganisms are attractive to this, attracted to these plants. So that is one technique to uh, invite these beneficial insects in the production area. And utilization of natural insecticides or biopesticides. So biopesticides are extract from uh, plants uh, with pesticidal properties. So in our center, we are producing biopesticides from Agricillirium sepium or Madre de Cacao. So we collect leaves and we ex extract it and the extract was uh, used as biopesticide to control insect pests. And other samples or plant that can be utilized as source of biopesticide are the uh, Luyang Dilaw or the turmeric, uh, the hot pepper or capsicum anum. So all these plants have pesticidal properties. You can extract it and you can use it as biopesticide against insect pests. I think that's all for my uh, presentation. And if you have questions, so please uh, do so. Don't uh, hesitate to ask your questions. And I'm willing to give my answer. So thank you very much and good afternoon.